Hello there, so I'm going to start this episode really from what I did immediately after I finished the last episode. So, after finishing the last episode, I thought, what can I install first? And having looked about on the internet for a bit, I thought, let's install Chrome, because I wasn't having that much fun with Midori, really. Now, I went onto the Chrome website and tried to install it by that, and it came up with some... A, it, gave me a .deb file to download and not knowing anything about Linux really I tried running this and opening it and it opened an archive and it just didn't work um, and then I looked around on the internet for a bit and found the other way of doing it uh, which is using apt uh, or sudo apt get install and then chromium browser like so so I'll just let it run through this um, and then I'll uh, get back to you after the end of this there you go so that all appears to be done now so I'll show you what happens when you run it. So you go internet and then you click Chromium web browser. Now my experience wasn't great because it seems that it just can't handle it um, and it's appallingly slow. Um, yeah wasn't really sure how worth it it was really uh, as you can see it's trying to load the get started page here and it, it just appears to take forever um, so personal choice really not sure how worth it is um, obviously it kind of works still a bit slow it's nice it's nice to have uh, the Chrome functionality, the look of Chrome, uh, you can still sign in with your Chrome account. So you can use it for that, but I, it, I didn't find it that good really, so I might use it, but I think I'm going to mainly stick to Midori since it seems to be a bit more reliable, and I've had several crashes with Chrome already, uh, so I don't think it's that worth it. So, um, I hope you can read what's on the uh, terminal now. I've made the font bigger, because I know last time it was tiny and it was a bit pointless, really. So I'll just open up a fresh terminal. And, uh, well, the next thing I worked on after that was uh, some physical computing. So, um... If you have a look at the little setup I've got down here, currently it's uh, just got some resistors in, but I'll uh, take these ones out. So currently it only has these three resistors in here. Now, these three resistors um, are of the orange, orange, brown, gold pattern. It's uh, what came with my kit over here. Now, um, using kind of hashing together some sample code, um, I did manage to get something working. So I'll uh, just try and kind of recreate what that was that I got working. Um, and I'll uh, show you show you getting it working uh, in a second. Right, so now I've got them all plugged in, um, I'll just explain what they all are. So this um, is the ground, it's connection, connected to the third pin down, uh, or pin 6 on the left hand side. Um, and then these three are connected to uh, three of the GPIO pins, uh, specifically GPIO 17, 21 and 22. Um, so now I'll... 
um, just show you what I've been kind of doing um, and how I managed to get the setup working uh, and what I had to do um, on the Raspberry Pi and in the terminal to get it up and working. So, now we're here on the screen. Um, a compiler should come pre-installed on the Wheezy uh, image. So that shouldn't really be a problem. Uh, you can check this by just going GCC and then dash V. There you go. Um, gives you lots of information about the compiler. So to get, since I'm mainly a C++ programmer, um, I decided to get the Wiring Pi library um, for C++. In fact, it's been there's, there are wrappers for lots of other different languages. Um, anyway, but I'm I'm using it for C++. So what you have to do is you have to go CD user and then um, I'm just going to list the files that are here and you can see there's include lib um, and they're the two which we, we care about so I'm just going to go CD into lib and then list that again and as you can see there are lots and lots and lots and lots of uh, different libraries that I've in that come installed on this um, or that I have gone and installed um, so I'll just shrink this down a bit so you can see them all here you go now you can see them all so um, here's GCC on the left um, and in fact there are loads and loads of different libraries here so these are important um, because it means these are what um, the compiler uses um, when we include a library in our C files. So I'll just go up again and list them again. So then if we go into uh, C CD include and list of files there we can see once again uh, there are a lot of files and folders. Um, now these are the header files uh, that you include in your um, C++ programs as well. So I'll just uh, go back out of that. Oh. So, now we've looked at where all the libraries and, and standard include files are, I'm going to show you where to put uh, the wiring pi uh, library. So, if we just cd into ho, into root. Now, if you go cd and then user local and list of files there. Uh, cd into lib then you can see across here I have wiring pi now that's because I've already installed this but if you go onto the wiring pi website um, then you can find uh, how to download and install it and it says make sure you get git core that's using sudo apt get install git core and then you clone uh, the uh, git directory uh, which is, I'll probably post a link to it in the description um, then you just go cd uh, wiring pi um, and then you go dot slash build now I'm not going to do this because it's already been built um, so I don't particularly want to fiddle with it, but that should work perfectly. It worked perfectly for me. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, you do actually need to do sudo dot slash build. Um, you have to do sudo for most commands. If you try a command and it says permission denied, obviously try sudo. It will probably work. 
Now, that will compile and add it. So that therefore means that um, I'll just uh, go back into my root direct uh, into my home directory, um, and you can see all the files I've got here. Now, I've been uh, looking at some traffic light files, um, but actually I'm going to look at um, this over here, which is my own folder. So I'll just cd into um, pi data logger, then the uh, folder inside that, which is where they're all stored. So my main.cpp file is the one that we're interested in here. So uh, sudo nano main.cpp and that opens up a nano editor and you can see the uh, what I've got here. So include IO stream, that's just so I can print stuff out include standard uh, input output again that's uh, just kind of standard what I put in the tops of files standard lib and then um, this uh, here um, as you can see include GPIO wiring pi now actually I've just noticed I don't need the GPI I don't think I need the GPIO there um, so I'll go control X I better shrink this down a bit since we're not seeing the ends of this there you go that's better so now uh, that just prints out test uh, GPIO test program. Now I'm setting up here pin naught and six. Um, now, if you go onto the uh, website, you can see what pins uh, you need to look at. So, because of the specific pins I'm using for this, I'm using 17. Uh, 22 and 23 um, which are not uh, sorry no I'm not I'm using uh, 14 15 and 16 I no, I get that wrong again I am using seven uh, 17 22 and 23 sorry 17 21 22 uh, which are not two and three respectively so if uh, I'm using not there, and if I go two, um, and then I can type a new one for three. So that's pin pin mode three output, and then I can edit what they do down here. So digital write uh, will write. Uh, the value on to pin naught and off to pin two and I'll do that again so digital right three naught then there's a very short delay and I can do the same again but this time I'll turn the initial one off and I don't need to do anything to the last one because it's already off and then I'll do it again so digital right and I'll set 2 to naught uh, digital right and I'll set 3 to 1 and then again delay 100 and I'll just save that now this is where you have to know the, uh, the compile command so I'm using G++ uh, then dash O which means 
uh, file name. Uh, sorry, uh, output name. So LED uh, test, and then main dot cpp, which is the file I would like to compile. Then you need to put in the header and include location, which we looked at earlier. So that's dash i. Um, use uh, user include and then dash l user uh, lib which is what we were looking at earlier and then dash small small l wiring pi I believe this just tells it um, to use the library wiring pi which is why I don't think wiring pi dot h is necessary in the includes. Anyway, so we'll run the compile. It'll take probably uh, 20 seconds, maybe less. Yeah, I think that took a bit less. So now I'll just run sudo, because you need to be in sudo to use the GPIO pins, uh, dot slash LED test. Now, I'll just run that again and uh, show you it down here. So, as you can see, nothing happened. C classical first problem. So, uh, I'll just run through and double check everything and then I'll come back to you once I've tried and once I think I've figured out what's wrong. Okay, so I discovered one mistake. Um, in fact, it was repeated on all uh, three of them, where for starters, this, it was plugged into the wrong row. So if you can see on this board, um, there are rows, and it was in a different one to the row that was the resistor was in, so I just needed to do that, uh, which then fixed it. However, now, um, if I run it, you can still, still see that only one of them flashes. Um, so I'm going to work on it some more and uh, see if I can get any uh, better results. Okay, so sadly I have to tell you it was actually that problem for all of them um, except for, for the other ones it was along the LEDs they were a row out again. So I'd recommend and I'll probably recommend to myself uh, to make sure that I uh, get it in the um, right section. Okay so uh, now I'll just run the program. Uh, so there's the program. I'll hit enter and you'll be able to see what happens. There you go. So loops through ten times on that. And uh, that's about all I've got for the moment. Uh, hope I'll be able to get some other stuff up. But for now, that's the uh, end of episode two. Two.